Not you yet, me. Okay. Hello, hello, everybody. This is Sandra Graves. Hello, hello. And today I have with us an amazing woman, an amazing, amazing woman. And you know why I'm saying amazing? Because as soon as she connected with me today, that spirit just was so good. It was so, so, so balanced. And that's the reason why I'm telling you it is it was her smile, her attitude, her energy. There was everything right there. And today is the first time that we are really talking live. And that's the reason why I'm really encouraged to share her with you based on the topic that we are going to be talking about. She's perfect for this topic. Perfect, perfect, perfect for this topic. Her name is Naomi. And we're not talking about Naomi Campbell because I don't think she will be as smart as this woman right now. Okay. That is the reality. So all you Naomi Campbell fans stepped away, stepped <laughs> away because we have the real Naomi yeah. with us and she is going to be sharing about, um, single mom, you know, how to get that happiness and how to keep it. Because a lot of you always, ah, I am a single mom. I am this. Come on, cut the crap. Let's get better than that because we have children to raise, greatness to encourage. And you cannot do that with an attitude of, ah, I am a single mom. So I'm going to shut up for just a little bit and let Naomi talk. And she will tell you her last name because I can. So Naomi, it's all yours, okay? Go Thank ahead. Thank you, Sandra. So my last name is Adedoin. So don't bother pronouncing it, yeah? <laughs> yeah, I am a single mom, but I'm a very happy single mom. I'm living a fulfilling life. I'm, even, I'm so living my best life. You know, um, I'm a businesswoman. I'm a consultant. I'm a writer. Um, I help people write. I help people bring their ideas to life. I help single moms find joy, find happiness, find structure in their life. I mean, who says because you're a single mom, you have to live a stereotypic life? Like, who says? I mean, the life that we live is awesome. And it's great. And you can also find a new beginning as a single mom. You know, however you became a single mom, it does not matter. You're here now and you're going to find happiness and you're going to keep it the right way. That's right. So yeah. Naomi, let's keep it real. Let's keep it yeah. real. And, you know, I'm really excited about this because everything that I say, um, one thing that you guys got to be clear about, there's no people pleasing here and there's no hypocrite here. Yeah. I say what I feel and I feel what I say. <laughs> so whatever I say about her, it wasn't to make her feel good. Okay. So if you can go back to past interviews, you can say, I say something different from everybody based on what I feel about them. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's put that together right there. And she's not paying me to say anything. The Holy Spirit is okay. Okay. That's who is paying me. So with that said, let's get together and talk about this today. We want to talk about the happy, 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 happy. So really, how do we begin this? You, you, let's start with you. How do we begin this conversation? Tell us, Naomi. First of all, you need to know yourself. You know what? You need to know yourself. You need to know who you are. Tell us more about that. Yes. So first of all, the way I started my journey of being happy, it wasn't rosy, but I'm glad I'm there and I'm glad I'm keeping it. But it was by knowing myself, knowing my being, knowing who I am. Who is Naomi? What does Naomi love? Why does Naomi love what she loves? You know, understanding my value, understanding who I let into my life, setting boundaries, accepting myself and just doing me, you know, and doing me is me not, you know, accepting people's validation of how to live my life. You know, you know, me being. Yeah, but, but I, I, I hear that all the time. And I am going to give you the devil's advocate response of, yeah, I hear Tony Robbins say that. I hear a lot of women say that, but I don't know how to do that because I read a lot of books. I listen to a lot of audio, but I still cannot find my joy, my happiness, because being a single mom is like so much. Tell me. Oh, sister. Everyone go through things in life. Mm. I mean, you get why me? Why not you? <laughs> you want it to happen to me or the next person to you? I mean, we all have our fair share of challenges in life. Some bigger than others. Do you understand? So why not you? 
So first of all, when you when you accept that, you start to understand that, you know, when it comes, just embrace it mm. and go through the process. Because you see, this process is of our challenge. It builds our character. And mm. I know in it, it seems like, oh, cliche, build character, blah, blah, blah. But I've gone through the journey and I'm telling you, it's what building your character for. It is, sis, because think about it. Um, I went through years of depression and, you know, I, I, I faced um, situations whereby they could have taken my kids away from me. And, you know, if I'd continue to go down that rail, that, that road, I won't be here. I'll be dead. I'll be long gone. But one day I told myself enough was enough. I didn't understand myself in one day. I didn't understand myself in one year, but I started to seek help. That was the first thing I did. Mm -hmm. I became a single mom because of abuse. People become single moms for different reasons. I, you know, became a single mom from domestic violence. So I had to seek help, like counseling, like therapy. But then I started to work, work and exercise. I know it sounds so cliche, so simple, but it is magic. It's there's, There's something about being out, you know, under the weather be it raining, obviously don't go out in the rain, but sometimes I go out jogging in the rain. Don't go out jogging in the rain, but yeah, I like it. But sunny, cold weather, just go out in the sun. In the morning, wake up, take a 30 minutes walk, exercise, do something, stretch, but just go outside. There's something about nature and just, you know, just breathing. So the problem you are, you, you, you are not dealing with now will still wait for you. Until you deal with that problem, you're not going to move to the next level of your life. So why not you? You know, why not you? So, and that was one of the things I had to accept to myself. I had to accept. I told myself, okay, Naomi, you have three kids. They didn't beg you to come to this world. You know, you're not going to let them suffer because you can't get your ass together, you know? And I just thought to myself, no, I'm going to do better. If not for me, because I didn't love myself at the time I was saying this, but because of the love I had for my kids, I said, I want to be someone they would look up to. You know, I want to be someone they would say, oh, have you seen my mom? You know, yes. I my mom, my mom's so cool. I mean, yes. there's two things in place, but you know, when they look up to you, they've accepted you. They, yeah. They've accepted who you are, yeah. you know? And I, I, I want to be a role model for my kids. I want to be a role model for other women. And I told myself, I said, I'm not going to live a wasted life. And that, that was what finding, that was how I started finding my happiness, to be honest. Mm-hmm. You know, I started accepting myself. I started to study myself. And, you know, it sounds so, um, so theoretical, but yes, I started to study myself. Because the, there are certain people that when they come close to me, they're too toxic. You know, I start to make bad decisions. I know, tell me about it. Like, oh, bye, toxic people. I start yes. to make bad decisions. I start to... But um, how about those people that was in your life already? Because in your life, you already had toxic people. Because, I said, I you know, said, right now, all these women that are listening to you, they are they have toxic people in their life. Yes, and, and every some time of them you complain about them. something, they are like, yes, yeah, it's happened to me too. Yes, you need to set boundaries. You need to set boundaries. I mean, a lion, do you see a lion rolling with um, hyenas? Do, mm-hmm. you see, do you see a gorilla rolling with uh, meerkats? You know, you need to set boundaries. You, you can't find happiness if you can't set boundaries. That's right. Because people are going to bring negative energy to you and you're going to feed on that negative energy yes. and you won't be able to do anything. You won't be able to come out of your situation. Yep. And I'm not saying it from paper. I'm saying it from my life experience. Yes. So even if it's your mom, if it's your brother, if it's your loved one, if it's your relationship, get out of the yes. relationship. Yes. You have just this one life to be happy. Why, why waste it on, on so much negativity? So yeah. you need to set boundaries. I started setting boundaries by just not allowing everybody in my personal space. That was the first thing I did to set yeah. boundaries. And you're talking I, about those setting those on boundaries and you mentioned your mom your brother let me tell you people those can be the most toxic people the people that love you the most can also be toxic because they believe that they want better for you they believe that they know more than you they believe 
that, oh my goodness, you are on the wrong path, right? But no matter what path you are on, you got to make that decision. Up or down, you're going to suffer the consequences. So if you are going to go through something, make sure that it's because you put yourself there, not because your mom put you there or your brothers put you there because of the opinion. Okay, so that's what um, Naomi is talking about setting boundaries. Boundaries is letting people know, I will make my own mistakes. I am going to listen, but I don't have to obey, right? Yes, because um, luckily I've got brothers that are very supportive. My brothers were very supportive of me, you know, growing up. My mom also. Um, But they're setting, you can have supportive family members but their advice or their opinions might not fit your situation in the moment. And it will seem to you, it does not seem toxic, but you see, even your twin sister, if you have one has not gone through the same experiences as you. So she might, or he might give you her wrong advice and it might become toxic for your own situation. I'm just trying to let you understand that anything can be toxic. Even a, 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 um, if you don't control the um, the temperament of your kids when they start to, yeah. it can become toxic for you. Yes. Set boundaries true with your kids. Mm-hmm. No mommy time now. It's time to go to bed. Put them to bed at the right time because you need mommy time to get yourself together. You need to get yourself together. Yes. And you can't be a good mom if you can't get your mental health in check. That's right. You can't get your emotional health in check. You know. Um. So. Um. So setting boundaries is a whole lot, you know, is, is a whole, is a different topic, you know, you yeah. know it's not something one can just treat, but I want to focus on happiness, being happy, you know, um, over the years, I've come to understand people around me and they've come to understand me. Um, I remember growing up, um, my mom really wanted me to be like her, you know, and I was just a different child, you know, and, um, Luckily, you know, as adults, we are best friends, but growing up, it wasn't that way. You know, growing up, I found our relationship to be really toxic. I found it really controlling because I'm the kind of, you know, girl that just wants to wear a top and a jeans to church. But my mom is the one that says, oh, you need to wear this dress, this suit, you know, and I'm like, but I'm not comfortable. And, you know, I can't even sit down properly. I'm like, I'm not comfortable. And it's like, you see me, I'm just all stuffed up, like, you know, something fell off. Oh my yeah. head. And I had I had to, as I grew older, I just, you know, one day started I opened up to my mom. No, I'm comfortable in this. No, I, I love myself this way. I, I like what I'm wearing. You know, it fits me this way. I'm comfortable with it. And I think it applies to other areas of our life. What are you comfortable yeah. with? What, yeah. what really sits well deep down within you? If you're in a relationship and you can't be yourself, that means you can't be happy in that relationship. But how did your mom respond when you were doing that? Um, to be honest, it was a long um, process. It wasn't in one day. We still, we still walk through things, you know, because I'm my only girl. You know, she's my best friend now, but we still walk through things because, you know, I have to like, no, mommy, like, mommy, this is my privacy. This is it. Like, <laughs> you know, mommy, I'm an adult now. No, 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 no. You know? And it, it's fun to be honest, going through that process with her sometimes. Like, no, mommy, you've lived your life, <laughs> my life now. And obviously, there's times that you know she she's got very good counsel, you know, from our own experiences. So there are times like I'm like, okay, okay, yeah. mom. And we but are not yeah, saying to be disrespectful. We are saying you can set boundaries while you've been respectful because that's yeah. those people really love you. They really care about you, yeah. but you have to care about them by caring about you and setting those boundaries. You need to let them know that they need to step back when they need to step back. And that is how you're going to be loving and respecting each other. Because if you allow them to cross that line, eventually they're not respecting you. So you're not loving yourself when you are allowing somebody to disrespect you. Is that correct, Naomi? Yes. And and the more you don't allow them to respect you or to um, respect your boundary or your space, um, the longer um, you allow them to cultivate the habit and mm. the other it becomes for the change to occur. Yeah. And the other it becomes for you to also try and, you know, instigate the change. Right. So the earlier you do it, the better. Right. Just open about it. Yeah. I mean, and it make you unhappy. 
because yes. we're talking about happiness, but if you uh, always have to be on the tippy toe and oh, yeah, this person, oh, I don't want to do that, but I want to do it just to please them and all that. You're not going to be happy because yeah, that's not what it is. That. You cannot be a people pleaser and be happy. Mm-hmm. No people. So I've said, I've said you cannot, if you don't set boundaries, you can't be happy. If you are a people pleaser, if everybody loves you, you can't be happy. I mean, That's everybody right. loves Jesus. So why should everybody love you? You know, That's right. if everybody loves Good you. Good point. You, you're doing something wrong. Why should everybody love you? Like, there were some people that had problems with Mother Teresa, as nice as she was. Yeah. And what I'm just trying to say is that everybody's different. There are things you will do that your twin will not like. So why should the world love you? Let, let me explain. You just said people that have father and Mother Teresa is because Mother Teresa, she loved giving, but it still is a selfish way because it was all about giving and giving and giving and all about how, you know, um, what she can do for people. Mm-hmm. And no matter how perfect we think we are, we are not because we are not God. Okay, so that's God. what I'm yeah. saying. With her example of Mother Teresa, Mother Teresa was not perfect, and mm-hmm. so you are not perfect. So don't try to be. Yes, I mean the only perfection we have is in God. Mm-hmm. But as humans, no, we're not no. perfect. No, and we need to accept who we have. We need to we need to love ourselves for who we are. Like right. everybody has got flaws. So you, you um um at some point you know your shortcomings. Would, it will come out in a relationship or in a friendship or at work, but you need to quickly accept who you are so you can move mm-hmm. on quickly from getting hurt because people would offend you. People would, you know, would do things that, you know, would, would upset you and could trigger depression, could trigger unhappiness. I always tell people that um, happiness is not a destination. You know, you can be happy anytime in the day. You can be happy every day. And you cannot be happy sometimes because there are times, and even the Bible says that there's a time for everything under the sun. You can't, it's not possible to be happy every day because challenges will come. There are times you're frustrated. Your kids have stressed you out. There are times that, you know, you're broke. There are different things that oh, come. Yeah. But you have to remember that in that moment, it is just a state of mind. It is in yeah. a state. You, you can still be that happy person, you right. know, but what is happening to you, your circumstance has not limited you from being happy. You need yeah. to see the bigger picture. It is a state. This is this is a problem I need to face now. Yes. You know, and just face it. You mm-hmm. know, um, recently I went through some challenges and I was almost getting back into depression. And I told myself, and I remember, my, I talk myself up a lot. <laughs> I do a lot of daily affirmations. So whenever I feel like I'm getting, you know, down, I just start talking myself up. You know, and it really works like magic. And I remember I started telling myself, I'm like, Naomi, why are you feeling this way? You know, this this is just a phase. This is just a phase. This phase is going to pass. And yeah. another phase will come. So your your mood shouldn't be changing with your phases. You yeah. should have a, a happy state. Like, yes. come what may, I'm a happy person because I love myself, because I've accepted yeah. myself, because I know who I am. Yes. You know? I'm confident of my identity. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But when challenges happen, that doesn't mean I can't be a happy person. That means in that moment, in that state, I'm dealing with this challenge, you know, because sometimes we we carry our challenges on our head. Oh, I'm a single mom. Oh, I have three kids. Oh, I don't have a life. Oh, I mean, you will never have a life if you continue that way. (laughs) You know, because you keep saying it, you keep saying it, that it keeps happening because you keep talking your reality into life. You keep saying it, you know, and you keep acting it, you know. It's not the end of the world. I have three kids and I do so many things. Yes, it's a juggle. Lady, you heard what she said. She said she have three kids. So if she can be smiling with three kids, (laughs) okay, you can smile too. Yes, we can smile too. Because one of the things I do that really helps me, Sandra, is structure. And I know it seems like a textbook thing. It is not. I've done it. It has worked for me. So I have, I mean, I'm not scientific about it. I'm flexible about it because there are times I'm just not on, um, not too well physically and I just want to rest. But most times I have my morning routine. 
you know, before my kids get up, you know, then I get them ready for school and nursery. You know, they go, I work from home. So, uh, you know, I have my business. I need to talk to my team. Then I have my normal stuff that I do. Then I'm also a writer. Then at some point during my lunch hour, I try to go for a stroll. If I've not gone for a stroll. So you say you're a writer? Yeah, I write, yes. Oh, so you wrote any books? Yes, I have. Yes, I have one. Yeah, what do you have? (laughs) What is is this? So enough would help any woman come out of domestic violence. It will help any woman come out of a toxic relationship. So I'm what giving is- a real life account of some of my experiences in abuse and how I broke out of those kind of situations, you know, and I've given it back. Well. Show us the back, show us the back of it. So the back just has, oh, okay. um, sorry. So, um, so is there any quotes or anything that you can read to us from it? Anything yes. that you, you think yes. that will be like good for today? Yes. So yes, I have a favorite chapter in, you know, so I wrote it, but this is my favorite chapter. And it's called The Long Bad Dream. And it's called The Thoughts of an Inner Child. Now, you see me, I'm happy. If I told you the things I've been through, you'll be shocked. I was abused sexually at age eight for a period of time. After then, I got into another situation whereby I lived with a friend, a mom's friend. And for four years, I went through another form of abuse. Then eventually went to school, came out of school, then went into domestic violence, um, marriage then almost lost my life i had health challenges you know they took out my right thyroid gland you know i had also for years i'm just saying it hasn't been a rosy journey but i'm telling you i found my happiness and it's in knowing who i am and i'm going to read this to you and so because when, when you say when you talk about happiness and some people say oh she has not had any problems in her life you know what i mean no, it's not, it's not about that. It's because my problem cannot be bigger than my maker. <laughs> like, seriously. And if I know my identity, I know who I am. So, you know, the problem will come and it will go. But my myself, my happiness has to remain, you know. So um, I'm just going to read um, maybe the first um, few lines and the last few lines, you know, just because of time. So... Um, The door closed behind me, scared to death, not knowing what to expect next. Fear gripped me with flashes of uncertain move of him running through my head. Help, no one can hear me. See, see me, I am here, but no one was seeing me. Oh no, I am doomed. Those were my thoughts when I was trying to commit suicide, like I was doomed. I thought to myself, what am I going to do yet again? He had failed me. When would the pain stop? I wondered. I had fallen for an illusion of love, a love that does not exist. And I know a lot of single moms um, go through periods of when they leave a relationship because you know they didn't feel loved or because of abuse or because the, uh, the, they didn't have financial help, different things. Different things bring us into the situation. And I'll continue. Just as I was thought as a child, just as I thought as a child, why does he hate me? I have done all he wants. My skin crawls, not knowing what next to be demanded of me. This was me in abuse, you know, this thought was me in abuse. It was like a long bad dream, you know. Shout, little girl, shout. That did not come to mind. No one would believe me. He's a perfect person to everyone. My identity is lost. Confused and thinking, what is wrong with me? Is it my fault? What did I do to attract perpetrators? You know, and you know, that goes on. And I said, why am I stuck? Little girl grow up. Because little girls do grow up. They become adults. But I felt stuck because I'd been going through abuse of different forms since I was a child. It started from sexual abuse at age eight. And I was just tired of life. I was just fed up that. Why, why me? And I would say those things to myself when I had no awareness of who I was. And I said, is it not over? There is a long way to go. Time they say heals all wounds. Yeah, time brings you healing. Don't rush your healing. You know, don't rush the process. And that's why I keep saying, challenges come, embrace the challenge. But remember, you need to remember why you are happy, why you need to be happy, especially if you are a mom. Because of those kids, like seriously, kids pick up our energies. Do you know that? 
even yes. from the womb, they pick up. Like I noticed that with my kids, you know, the different types of the the phases of my depression, the ones, you know, how they pick they pick up energies mm -hmm. for them, please. You yeah. know. If you are oh, sad, they are sad. If you are happy, they are happy. If you are yeah. insecure, they are insecure yeah, because they're like, and they take everything personal. Whatever's happening to you, they yes. think I did it. Something yeah. I did. Yeah. yeah. You know, all things have passed and you are now a new creation. I told my, I was, this is me telling, you know, like you're wrestling with your thoughts. It's almost over now. I am though. Who was renewed? You know, I was, because I am someone of faith. You know, I kept um, telling myself, okay, I am a new creation. But then I'm like, am I really a new creation? I mean, I'm still in this mess. The little girl is still trying to find her way. Our shoes do not fit. Our body does not fit. Life seems to have passed her by. She's waking up now. Was it all a dream? A long, bad dream. <laughs> Excuse my French. Oh, shit. It is real. I am awake. Imagine when, one of when, my favorite words. You know, like I'm like, it's not, it's not a dream. It's my reality. This is my life. You know, I've lived a long life of abuse. I need to wake <laughs> up. I'm not gonna allow yeah. the cycle to continue in my life. And so, just two more sentences. What happened? Why did I allow myself to sleep for that long? Why are you allowing yourself to sleep? Why are you alive if you're going to be sleeping? And when I say sleep, that is, you know how you cannot live for your life? Yeah. When, you, when you're not happy, for every day that you're not happy, you are not living. You know? Um, and I said, why did I allow myself to sleep for this long? Why did I become a passenger in my own car? You know, mm -hmm. car being destiny, you know, in your own journey of life. Why yeah. are you a passenger? You should drive your journey, not, don't be a yeah. passenger. Yeah. Don't allow people validate your, your experiences. Don't allow people validate your trauma. Don't allow people validate your decisions. You know, where are my keys? You know, the keys to this journey, where are my keys? As I searched in the dark, I stumbled upon the right map. Map being, you know, your spirit guide. Yeah. You know, I stumbled upon the Holy Spirit again. You know, the light came on and there it was staring at me my bunch of keys, my many talents, all my potentials and dreams. Wow, tears running down as I realized I still need to learn to drive with the keys. You know, no matter what you've been through, you see everything that, that is in you is still in you. Your experiences, your circumstance did not take away the talents that you were born with. It didn't take away your gifts, but you need to find yourself. You need to rediscover yourself when you become a single mom. You know, you need to, because it's a new journey. You probably, some people make choices to be single moms, but some people, their situation is born out of circumstance. So right. they don't know what to do when they come out. You right. know, they just give up on life. Well, you right. can't. Those key, you just need to find the right key, you know, to to drive your car. You know, you That's have to right. find the right key, and you do that by finding yourself. You know, right. read books, empower yourself, get a counselor, find a life coach, do something. Google. Thank God for Google. Google how to find myself. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Then I sighed. I was like, and this is me. Like I'm hearing, you know, like God talking to me and says, almost there, child. You're almost there. Just a little more patience. The voice said, wipe your tears. It's about to rain and you are going to need your cover. Grab your shades. It's about to get too bright. A rainbow yet to be seen by the world is surfacing. Do not be afraid. That's good. Good job. So, yes, good no, that, job. That's just you know, good job, good job, good um, job, good job. Yeah, that, that was good. And um, definitely, you guys, single moms, don't... One thing that you have to realize, when I was a single mom, my kids was my strength. I mean, like, before my life, before having children, I was not as strong as I am now. With my kids is how I became strong. With my kids is how I became, life became purposeful. Yeah. It became, I had greater visions before I'm like doing things or just doing them. Now I have a reason for doing them. 
Okay. So look at that. Look at what your life is all about and what it was before. And let me tell you that if you didn't have those kids, you'd be nothing right now. You have them because you needed to have them. And that's the reason why they are going to turn your life around. They are going to make you be better than you thought you could ever be. That's what it's all about. But if you continue to see them as a burden, you will never be happy. Never. You see your child, however many you have, however little you have, is your weapon. And I use the word weapon, your strength. You know, strengths mm-hmm. can be a weapon. A weapon mm-hmm. that can stand challenges. It That's can right. stand circumstances. Yeah? So your children are your weapon. So you know what she said? You know, a, a child gave us strength. That yeah. strength is a weapon. So when things came, when challenges came, you know, you, there was a weapon that, that kept you going. You know, that you were just using to like, you know, shed all those challenges of like, I'm going to move forward because of this child. I'm going to push forward. And sometimes um, I know like, it seems like, oh, this child is a body. No, I, I, I know it, it, it can be tough. You know, sometimes mm-hmm. I go into a room and like, ah! <laughs> when my kids have them, I'm like, ah! and they're like, mommy, why are you screaming? I'm like, I just really, 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 really need to scream so that mommy can be a good mommy. <laughs> You know, I'm like, I just really, really, really need to. I'm like, I'm letting yeah. off steam. Like, mommy, why are you letting off steam? I'm like, can't you see the steam in my head? <laughs> so I understand it can be challenging. But while while um Sandra was talking, you know, something that came to my mind, and this is a secret that is not a secret, but a lot of people just refuse to embrace purpose. And I'll tell you what the secret is. Happiness was born from my pain. Because when I found purpose in my pain, I started to understand everything that has brought me to where I am. And I started to thank God for those experiences. And I stopped seeing some of them as mistakes. I started seeing them as lessons, as experiences in my journey. You know, I started seeing them as tools. Imagine I'm a handyman with, you know, my box of um, screwdrivers, hammer and all sorts of tools. You know, I started to see them like that, you know. Then I started to empower myself so that I don't make further mistakes, so that, you know, how how to navigate my my way in life better, you know. Mm. So let let your pain find purpose. Let let find whatsoever you've gone through, find purpose in it. You you might think, oh, I don't have any reason to like um to leave. You might feel your kids are you know burdensome. Please, sister. Please, brother, whoever is a single parent out there, find purpose in your pain. You'll find happiness when you find purpose in your pain. Because you see, you see other people leave because of your pain. And there's this sort of um satisfaction or what I call it fulfillment that it brings to you. You know, and I pray that eventually you start to see your kids more as gifts and weapons than burdens you know and it's just the the reason why some people would sometimes think oh you know my kid is a barrier is this is also because of maybe financial problems they would feel oh if i'm not if i don't have this child you know i can live a better life because of this child live a better life (laughs) yeah you know I, I perhaps won't be, I mean, I'm, I'm going somewhere. I'm not as successful as I want to be yet. I'm on a journey, but I don't think I would be where I am if I didn't have these three kids to provide for. I mean, who's going to feed them? Yeah. <laughs> you know, a different drive. It's totally different drive than when I was without kids. The drive is totally different. I can't even explain it, but it's, so much more meaningful. It's like you have this fire inside yeah. of you that you just were like, I gotta do this, you know? Yes. Right? And it, it also helps me to filter my dating life. So I don't just allow anybody to come into my home. I don't just date anybody. I don't just um make friends with anybody. I mean, I hope to be married someday again, but the fact that I think of my kids and, um, I've been in a situation whereby I had endangered them. And I thought, why? For what? You see, I'm I'm much more happy knowing that I'm safe. They are safe. Mm-hmm. I have life. I have mental health. I have a sound mind. My yeah. emotional health is stable. You know, I can live. I can walk. I can smile. I can exercise. 
you know like it, it, it takes time i don't want you to think i got here overnight it takes it takes consistency you have to build the <laughs> habits yeah you have to build the habits you know if you don't be i'm sorry you can't do it today i'm not doing it tomorrow it's not gonna work you have to just start seeing your challenges as the process this right. process i need to go through this process but i'm going somewhere but yeah. find your happiness sis if it's okay i'm just saying to i listed a few things just um so smile you know just a few research that i did you know i heard that the more you smile there's some or, or when you laugh just watch comedy there's some hormones that are released in your body and you know your body just your mood starts to change so watch comedy smile um exercise i exercise a lot i go to the gym if i don't have time i do walking exercise it helps me to clear my head and you know research also shows that there's certain hormones that is released into your body that helps to change your um your moods then eating the right things you know sometimes you know when you're sad and you're not happy you tend to binge eat I, i i can be an emotional eater so when i'm getting stressed i start to understand my triggers you know their yeah. triggers you know that that gets me for instance if i don't sleep well you know i get stressed i start to binge eat i start to feel unhappy so there are little things so it's not because of what you've gone through that you're not you're feeling unhappy there are people that have not gone through what you're going through and are in the same situation and are making a better life or are not or there are people that have gone through worse situations and are still making a better life of that situation so i don't want you to think it's because you're a single mom you're not happy and some single moms always feel sad that nobody would date them is a lie men do date single moms um single dads do get single i'm what i'm just trying to say is that it's not the end of the road for you you know mm-hmm. when you develop yourself you attract the right person that would respect you that would stay you know that would come and add to your happiness not make you happy because you have to be happy in yourself you don't want to be I, you don't no. want to be an emotional liability on anybody no. you know? So you need to be enough for yourself. You know, you need to be complete in yourself. Then you attract the right man. Then, because you see, when you're not happy in yourself, you attract broken men. So right. you keep going in a cycle of abuse, a cycle of lack, a cycle of different, you know, you, you come out of this, you get better with this. It becomes a cycle. We are waiting. We are waiting. It seemed like some connection problem right now. Yes, connection. Uh, problem. You're, you're back? Yes, yes. Okay, good. So since you're back, let's, um, let me have you just talk more about how to, the part about um, do you, right? And let's get to the um, not about you. Okay, not about you. Okay, so not about you was about purpose. I think I've um, shared some light about it. So not about you is about purpose, finding purpose, you know, finding happiness through purpose. So when I say not about you, you know, not about you, you know, and that's why I said, why not you? When you go to challenge, you're like, why do, why what, what, what do you mean by not about you? Because, you know, I, I'm telling you, I'm going to be the devil's advocate again. Um, mm-hmm. You keep saying, or oh, all you people keep saying, love yourself, take care of yourself, spend time with yourself, mm-hmm. you know, quality time. And then you're telling me it's not about me. <laughs> yes, your pain is not about you. Your happiness is about you. But your pain, because you, I mean, as, except my alarm, you say I have alarm for everything, even for me to go to bed. I'm like, I remind myself to go to bed. Um, so not about you is your challenges. When you see that there's a bigger picture for your for your pain, for the challenges you go to, you start you stop getting less offended by what people do to you. Like it's not about you. Like they they might be going through their own problems, you know. Um, and that's why you need to set boundaries because. Um, when somebody is going through their own stuff and you are not standing up, it's like two people trying to come out of water and they are drowning and they don't know how to swim. And the one that can, you know, even get to the top is being pulled down, you know? So in that moment, it's about survival. It's about survival. It's about your purpose. Your pain is about your purpose. 
you know, their network of people, we, we all came to do, there's nobody, Oprah will always say something. She says, there's nobody without a purpose. There's nobody without a gift. You know, so it's not about you and your experience is your gift. That's right. Your experience is your gift. So when you see that your experience is bigger than you, your purpose is bigger than you, then you understand that it is not about you. Yes, it is about you for you to be happy so that you can be fulfilling in every day in your life. Like, you know, the experience, you know, there's no point not being fulfilled and, you know, you're just doing things for people. But I'm saying those tools are not going to be used for you. Remember, I, I related experiences to tools. You know, your toolboxes, your screwdriver, your spanner. Are you going to be using it for yourself? No, you're going to use it to repair other things in people's lives, in the lives of your kids. That might be where you start from. Those experiences mm -hmm. you've had, you know, not letting your children relieve those experiences. You know, teaching them your values that you've learned from those experiences. So it's not about you. It's bigger than you. That's what I'm trying to tell you. It's mm -hmm. bigger than you. Your pain is bigger than you. It's not about you. So you should be, I, I, I'm now grateful for my pain, sis. It, it took a long time for me to, um, to come to this point. But I can tell you that I'm like, why not me? Like, thank you, God, that is me. Yes. If it wasn't you, it happened to your kids. You know, it could be anyone. So, so yes. be better you than your kids. Yeah, that's what I mean than my kids. And yes, so that's what I mean by it's not about you. You know, the, the experiences you are building is building your character for that glory, that place of glory. See, when, when, when you can do these things I'm talking about, you get a place in your life that you will look back and you'll be thankful for those experiences because you've become a strong woman. You know, you like who you see in the mirror. You, you respect who you see in the mirror. You love who you see in the mirror. You know, then you, who you see in the mirror is helping other women, is helping kids, is helping other people. So you see it's a bigger purpose. So it's not about you. So get over yourself. The purpose is bigger than you. So get up, get out of that depression, that state. Because if you don't grab your gift now, I'm sorry, you're as good as dead. Why are you leaving? Why? But if you're going to leave, fight to leave and live to the fullness. Find yourself, find happiness, find your joy. What, what makes you thick? What makes you happy? What, 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 find your serenity. That, that place of calmness that you can think, who do you want to be? Where do you see yourself in five years? Where do you see your kids? Do you want your kids to have your experience? You know, you know, some, you know, when people complain about, oh, I have kids, I, I don't have a life, I don't have this, you know, and you're like, okay, so what are you doing about it? You know, why are you doing about it? Okay, oh, I can't work because of my kids, you know, they're not here of school age. Okay. <laughs> No, I understand. Yeah. Now, thank God for COVID. I can say thank God for COVID because now there are opportunities for working from home. Yes. But guess what? If you have not been empowering yourself, when COVID came, you won't be able to work from home because you have not built any skills that will be able to get you the job to work from right. home. Yeah. And that was why I spoke about empowerment. You know, I'm, I'm a fan of opera, so you hear me talk about opera a lot. One of the other things she says is um, opportunity meets, meets preparation. There's no luck. So if you've never prepared, when opportunities come, they will pass you by. That's right. So, and, and that's why I said, like, you know, you're complaining, oh, my kids are not able to work. Okay, COVID came, remote work came, and it's going to be around for a long time. But have you developed yourself? Have you empowered yourself? Do you know what you can do? Do you know the skills you have? Have you built anything at all of yourself? So do you understand? What I'm, so the opportunity has come now, but because you have not prepared, you say I'm not just lucky. No, you did not prepare. There's nothing like luck. But when you you know, just keep on building yourself. You don't know what you're building yourself for. Some mm -hmm. some of the things I do now, I didn't start doing it now. You know, sometimes out of boredom, I just pick up a book and I'll read. You know, and what am I reading? Sometimes I'm reading about emotional healing. Because I like to do emotional eating. I'm a foodie. <laughs> you know, so, and, you know, when things get to me or I feel overwhelmed, pick up a book. 
you know, and sometimes... And if you don't like to read, there is auditables, yeah, okay? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Got to audit. There's lots of audiobooks up there, so there's no excuse. You want to be telling your kids, you got to read for school, and then they never see you pick up a book or never educate yeah. yourself. It mm -hmm. makes no sense at mm -hmm. all. So educate yourself so that they can feel that they have to educate themselves too. This is, in this world, if you can go on Instagram, you can go on Google. <laughs> I'm sorry. If you have a Facebook that you use or Instagram, are you sure Google is not paying you? You keep <laughs> mentioning. <laughs> no, it's just that Google has helped me. Google is not paying. In fact, they should be paying me. But no. Google, I, I, in fact, sometimes I'll have some funny dreams. I'll go on Google. I had this dream. <laughs> I do too. You did. I do too. That is before when we were younger. We have. A, the you know encyclopedias at home they have to my i remember my mom have to spend so much money just to have an encyclopedia and we will be so excited because we don't have to go to the library no we don't google, google. you know yeah. so if you don't know something google it since yeah. what i'm just trying to tell everyone out there that is trying to find happiness and keep it is that even after you find it if you're not consistent at these things you found you cannot keep it Right. So you see, self-discovery is a journey for life. You know, we are made in such a, you know, like onions, when you open onions, there's, a, there's something else. When you open onions, that's how we are made. You know, th there are things I keep discovering about myself. That I didn't know I was a writer for a long time. You know, I didn't know I was interested. I, I'm on my, on my work side, I'm, I'm interested in artificial intelligence. I didn't know that about myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I started discovering things about myself. Yes. And that's how it is. It's like an onion, you know, you open it, you discover something. It's like a domino effect. It opens other things up for you to discover. And yeah. that's why you have to go on this journey of seeking happiness. Happiness is not a destination. It's a state of mind that you can achieve every day. And you can keep it by building habits and being consistent at building those habits. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. And the reality is, is that what Noemi was trying to tell you is that she said, do you, be you, accept you, and it is not about you. And that did not mean that you just ignore you to please everybody else. She did talk about setting those limitations and if you don't know how to do that, Google it. <laughs> I think you phrase that last one too. Your pain is not about you. That's Even right. The people that make you go through pain, it wasn't about you. It was all about them. It's not about you. Your pain is not about you. Your experiences is not for you. It builds your character, but it's for a purpose. For so your you purpose. Know, that's why I said maybe we should turn that last one to your pain is not about you. So that you know that everything else is about you. You, you, you. Focus on you. Love yourself. Do you. Be you. Accept yourself. But remember, whatever you're going through, when you, when you can detach it from yourself because it's not about you. Compartmentalize it. Throw it somewhere. When you're ready to do it, do it. But don't let it take your happiness away. Yeah. Well, thank you. Well, you guys, if you ever want to tell your story here, all you have to do is send me an email to info at single mom that today, info at a single mom today, or you can follow me also on Instagram, and that will be in vivo life, just like this channel right here on YouTube. I am putting um Naomi's description, her link in information at the bottom of this video, if you want to go ahead and follow her and find out more about the book, if you have experienced those challenges that she just presented. However, if you had your own challenges and you have overcome and you have claimed victory, then I want to hear from you. You don't have to be an expert. You just have to be a fighter. That's what this is all about. We are all here to fight. Yeah. We are all here to be the best that we can be. And yeah. I want to hear from you because this channel is for that. It's for single moms who are fighter because single moms cannot give themselves the luxury of giving up because you have kids that are depending on you. So yeah, take that crap out of your head because you don't have time for that.
Okay. And look, what they say, ain't nobody got time for that. Right. That's what it's <laughs> So I am going to stop and I'm going to have Naomi close whatever you want to say. First start with inviting them to whatever pages that you want them to go to and then give us a strong closing for all the single moms that are listening today. Okay. Thank you. Um, so you can follow me on Instagram. You should follow me on Instagram. I post stuff daily that would help you daily. Um, my Instagram, and I forgot my Instagram, I do for a minute, <laughs> is the Naomi. It's, it's, it's at the bottom. I'm going to put it yeah. at the bottom. The Naomi, are they doing? So you can follow me on Instagram and, you know, get daily boost, you know, to just encourage you. I have a page where I, I do writings. I give tips to help single moms live a happy life every day, come out of depression, self, uh, how to take care of themselves, practice self-love and, um, practice self-care but what i'm going to leave with you today is that in doing yourself you have to remember that the ultimate goal is to love yourself when you love yourself you can um find happiness when you love yourself your kids also can love themselves because people think um the cycles sometimes are spiritual but sometimes they're not sometimes it just starts with the mom breaking that cycle of self um low self-esteem of um of weakness you know we just need to portray the who we want to be to our children and start becoming that person and it's by building habits building habits that those kids will grow up to start building themselves yeah. you know um for instance um, i was going to just give you an example have you have you done something wrong in front of your child before um, we are we are closing closing <laughs> Oh, we're closing. Closing. Time is up. Time just is up. close. Yeah. So let me just close. So build habits in front of your children so that they would stick to those habits and they will not depart from it. Thank you. I like to talk. <laughs> just like me, but I'm pretty good at keeping my time. Okay. Well, you guys, um, may 